Hello friends, this video on locomotion and movement part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us see what happens with this much of calcium ions. Now, the, now from here starts the main sliding filament theory. So in the previous slide we just saw that how this uh, uh, concept or how this uh, process of muscle, inter uh, muscle contraction is initiated. Now as soon as the signal reaches the muscle fiber, the calcium ions will begin to increase in the cytoplasm. So that is the start of the the process of muscle contraction. Now the level of calcium ions will increase in the sarcoplasm, fine. What will these calcium ions do? These calcium ions will start to bind with troponin. What is troponin? It is that protein which is present at regular intervals and this was the protein which was actually masking the myosin binding site on the actin element. So the um, troponin was the main culprit because of which myosin was not able to bind to actin. Correct? So now these calcium ions will start binding with troponin. So as a result what will happen? Masking on the actin for myosin will be removed. So the masking will be removed. So now there, there can be a bond between actin and myosin. So actin and myosin can now bind together. Right? So now let us see exactly. Let us take the help of animation to see how exactly this happens. So here this is the structure of this structure which you see at the top is the actin. So this structure represents actin and this structure represents myosin. So here this is the myosin head, this is the myosin neck and this is the myosin tail. And here what is this? This is the F filamentous actins the ball like structure this black colored structure which you see that is the tropomyosin and these structures are the troponin now what happens these red colored structures which you see they represent the calcium ions now when the calcium ions increase when the level of calcium ions increase in the sarcoplasm. Now where are these actin and uh, myosin present? They are also present in the sarcoplasm because inside the muscle fiber you have the myofibrils present in the sarcoplasm and myofibrils are nothing but actins and myosin. So this actin and myosin are also present in the sarcoplasm. Now when the concentration of calcium ions increases, these calcium ions bind with the uh, troponin as a result, troponin changes its structure. So the structure, the chemical structure of the troponin changes and also what happens is the troponin moves to some other location. So as a result, the masking is removed. Now once the masking is removed, now the myosin is free to connect to actin. Now, so this is the first step where the masking on actin is removed. Now what happens after that? Now in the step 2, what happens is the myosin is activated by energy from ATP hydrolysis. So myosin needs to be activated in order to combine with actin. And who activates myosin? Myosin is activated by energy. And who provides energy? Energy is provided by ATP. Okay, now as I mentioned before also that the myosin head has active binding sites for so it has two active binding sites. One is for the ATP and the other one is for the actin. Right? So now since it has ATP binding sites, so what will happen? ATP will bind with myosin. So now whatever has happened in step 1, let us quickly look at that. So in step 1 we saw that the calcium ions combined with troponin. So troponin structure got changed and it, re it got removed from the active binding site. So the active binding site which was earlier masked is now unmasked. Now what happens is ATP molecules, this yellow structure which you see is the ATP molecule. It comes and it binds with the ATP binding site of the myosin head. As I said, the myosin head has ATP binding site. So it, it binds to the myosin head. Now once the ATP binds to the myosin head, what happens? The ATP gets hydrolyzed to form ADP and inorganic phosphate. So ATP, what happened? What was the change? ATP got hydrolyzed to form ADP and inorganic phosphate. 
right so this is adp the green structure is adp and this is inorganic phosphate now when this reaction take place a bigger molecule is broken down into smaller molecules so this process is going to release a lot of energy so the energy which is released during this process that energy is utilized by myosin to make it activated so in order that myosin needs to be activated that activation energy is provided by hydrolysis of atp so now the myosin is activated so what does the activated myosin do the activated myosin will now bind to actin so if you see here this is the activated uh, myosin which binds to the actin because now in actin the binding sites the myosin binding sites in actin are now free they are no more masked by troponin so what is this this bond which develops this is known as a cross bridge so cross bridge formation takes place so this is called cross bridge right now as soon as this cross bridge is formed the inorganic phosphate is released so the inorganic phosphate gets released from the myosin head so in this step two cross bridge gets formed right now what happens once the cross bridge is formed let us see so in the previous slide what did we see so let us quickly see what we saw in step 1 and 2 so that we can understand it better so in the first step we saw that the calcium ions came in they uh, combined with the troponin the structure of troponin changed so they unmasked the active binding sites on actin now the myosin got activated by the atp molecule the atp molecule came it combined or it uh, joined to the atp binding site on myosin head now this atp got hydrolyzed to form adp and inorganic phosphate so a lot of energy got released and this energy activated myosin so the activated myosin then combined or then bonded together to the actin so as a result cross bridge was formed and then the inorganic phosphate was released so till here we studied in the last slide now what happens is this adp which is connected in the myosin this adp also gets released from the myosin now when the adp gets released what happens like it is something like this let us suppose you have a a heavy load on your head head just an example to tell you okay you have a very heavy load on your head and suppose you are standing and unknowingly suddenly somebody comes and takes that uh, load off your head what will happen for an instant you, your head will be moved right similarly if you are standing normally and suddenly somebody comes and puts a big load a heavy load on your head what will happen again you will tend to move a bit because suddenly some change is happening so in a very similar way when this adp gets released from the myosin what happens the myosin head pivots that is the myosin head tends to get inclined in this direction which causes a sliding of the thin actin filament now this actin filament is very thin when compared to the myosin filament now when this myosin head pivots or when it moves in this way this also gets slided so what happened as a result the actin filament sli was slided towards this direction and this results in the shortening of sarcomere how because you remember i told you that let us suppose this is your z line again this is another z line so that is how the act these z lines represent the actin filaments right and let us suppose this is your say i band so this is the i band again this is the i band and this entire thing is the a band okay so now by this process what is happening is that this light elements only the i band is being shifted towards this direction now the same process happens in this side as well so this is shifted in this direction so basically both the z lines are being brought closer to each other and that is how the sarcomere is shortened
so the sarcomere this is the length of the sarcomere so this length ends up in shortening okay now this is not the last step something happens even after this so let us see what happens now this step is known as the power stroke why is it called power stroke because this is the uh, main step where the sliding occurs and this sliding occurs due to the release of ADP. This is called the power stroke because the myosin head gives a stroke because of which the contraction of the sarcomere takes place. Now let us look at the next step that is the step 4. Now in th this is the step where the cross bridge breakdown takes place. The cross bridge breaks down in this step. So here what will happen is let us see. Again, from the beginning, we'll see so that you do not get confused what happened when. So calcium ions came combined with troponin. Troponin structure changed. The active binding site on actin unmasked. Myosin got activated when ATP came in and ATP got hydrolyzed. Lot of energy released. Myosin activated. As a result, cross bridge formation took place. Inorganic phosphate was released. After that, the ADP was also released and the myosin head pivoted which resulted in sliding of the actin filament. Now the ATP will again come and get attached to the ATP binding site because the ATP binding site is free right now. So the AT now you saw in the previous step that the ADP got released. In the previous step, we also saw that the inorganic phosphate also got released. So that ADP and inorganic phosphate will combine together to form ATP. And this ATP will come and again join the active binding site or the ATP binding site on the myosin head. Now, as soon as the ATP gets attached to the myosin head, the bond between myosin and actin gets reduced. Now, when the bond weakens, what happens? The cross bridge breaks down. Now, the cross bridge breaks down and then what will happen to this ATP? Now, this ATP which is present here, again the same process will take place as I discussed in step 2. This ATP will again get hydrolyzed to form ADP and inorganic phosphate and a lot of energy. So, when energy will be released, myosin will get activated, it will again form a bond and then again that will lead to step 3 where sliding will occur. So, basically the step 2 3 and 4 will keep on happening one after another. So it will be like a cycle. Now with each cycle, every time one cycle takes place, there will be little bit more sliding. So this sliding which will occur as a consequence of the repetition of these steps will accumulate to cause a contraction. So in first cycle, little bit of sliding. Second cycle, little more third cycle little more so that means more and more contraction more and more sliding will occur so more and more contraction will occur right so now the question is when will this contraction stop because if it carries on like this then the muscle will keep on contracting forever so when will this process of contraction stop so we will see that also thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.